Okay, so the idea of this block is going to become one of these, little round bottom bowl. That was turned green. Um, and we'll see how this one goes. I might sand it. We'll see. Anyway, I don't need uh, the full length of screw, so that's going to shorten the screw. I need a hole up the middle. More or less vertical. So this is a Vic Mark 3-in-1 screw chuck. And I can might as well let the lady do the work. So it's rather like feeding a horse. And it gets your fingers clear as soon as the the teeth grab, in this case the screw rather than the horse. So I'm gonna rough this one down with the half-inch spindle gouge, is what I usually rough these things down with. Because the shavings just get away a lot faster than uh, with a bowl gouge, which uh, can jam up in the flute. So the idea here is to, I'm using the, the wing of the tool, it starts pretty much on its side, drop the handle very slightly as I come in, and then take the tool through in a broad sweeping action. Now I just want to get the weight off the corner first. Uh, as I'm there, I'm going in the right direction, I might as well go on. So I go from a kind of pull, shear cut, roughing cut, into a proper shear, shear cut, with a, which is a clean, uh, cutting the wood much more cleanly. Uh, it's quite nice going from one to the other in one movement. Round transfer to the bevel rubbing. Let's see what's happening. So that's all clean. I cut it fairly near the pith here. So the pith is right there and right here. It's actually there's a little split. So I don't want the split in the wood. So I'm going to mark where that is. Okay, so looking up here, just looking at the top, there's the pith. Come around the other side, there's a little split, so I don't want that in the bowl, so just mark where that is. Oops, pencil slipped a bit. I just take that off using the, the wing of the tool, the right wing. Have the tool over right on the side. If you bring it in, flued up, it's going to crack bang every time. Just squeeze it in. Just pushing it in with my thumb because I've got more control that way. The knot split is now down there. That's all clean. That's what I've got to play with. Um, now, as far as getting the shape is concerned here, I'm going to just round this over at the top. Just stay there. And um, so I'll get this out of the way first. Cutting from the smaller to the larger diameter. Now I'm going to be down in onto the plywood backing disc here that right. and start to pull around the back here. Get the shape. I'm really looking at what's happening up on the top rim. Right, so I don't want it too undercut. So uh, that will pretty well do, I think. For shape, I want a kind of asymmetric shape. Now I'm back here again with the... Um, I've got my splits back here, so I really want to get rid of that. And I'm going to have to cut the plywood as well, so that's right. I've established my overall dimensions there, the shape, uh, probably bring this in a little bit more. And by the time I've got that round, that'll be fine. Now I'm going to get a, a foot on it next. 
Right, so now I'm going to just attend to the foot. I don't need all that foot. I can bring the speed up a bit now. So I'm up running near a 1300 or so. Have everything clean. I'm going to be taking the foot off eventually anyway. So just get rid of this using the wing of the tool here. Squeezing it in. And rolling it over, shear cut into the middle to undercut it slightly. And while I think about it, I'm going to mark center. So that's going to help me when I come to turn the bottom off later. So just float the pencil and leave a little white dot in the middle. Now I'm going to uh, make my initial cut round here using a uh, the 3 8 bowl gouge and it's got the steep right wing which means I can get in tight up against the, uh, the foot which makes for an easy start and because it's a deep fluted tool I can have the flute pretty well upright because I've got the support of the bevel on the, uh, on the right wing. And you know when you're doing this cut right because the shaving goes down into the flute comes up hits you in the face. Or if you've got somebody behind you like a cameraman it hits them in the face. <laughs> well you're not supposed to go downhill against the grain. It's always worth giving it a go just in case you can get away with it. Right, so I got away with it. Um, that's almost good enough not to need a, uh, a, a, a shear scraper, but I was going to show you how to use the shear scraper, so I'll do that. Now I need to project the curve I've got round into the bottom because um, I was going to leave this round bottomed in the end, although an alternative is to leave it with three little feet, but I'd rather I like the round bases. Can do that. So I'm just evening the tool in and it's flat on the rest, skewed to about probably skewed about 20 degrees and it's just so much easier to use a skewed scraper to make this curve than a square in one. I can do it with a square on one but I've just got to move so far and swing around with it. It's much easier just to be able to Kind of ease the ease the stew on back. Regards a very slight bulge there, just take that away. And uh, it looks quite nice and simple like that. I'll put a, a little bead in, um, for which I use a, a 3 8 bowl gouge. So I'm going to put this just uh, above the fullness of the curve. Um, the idea really is I'm just going to take the handle round in a circle anti-clockwise and that dips the edge in and out of the wood. So I just need to stop. It's like having an oar and a rollock on a boat. So you go into the wood, drop the handle and take it around a little arc and that's A, B. That's enough. Might just come in that side and just undercut the bead a little bit. But it'll do. One of the hazards with once you can cut beads, you tend to smother everything with beads, and uh, it's not really that necessary. So there's a teeny little frill of material there where I made my other cut in, so I've just got to ease the tool in right on its side. Now, if I have the tool too far over one or the other there will be a catch which I'm at pains to avoid. Mm. 
continue it right in on its side. Now just sand that. And I'm not going to do very much at the moment because I can do it all from the other side. I just want to get it smooth enough that it's, the friction isn't going to uh, make it painful to support the bowl as I hollow it out. Right, so that comes off and uh, I suppose, yes, I've, I better make sure I've got a chuck which fits it. It's the next one down. A bit embarrassing if the chuck doesn't fit suddenly. But this is just loose gripping, so this is a, a mid-size, I think it's a kind of 60 mil uh, shark jaws, Vicmark shark jaws, so that will grip that all right. Oh, I was forgetting. I didn't have the I didn't have the draw across far enough. Right. Hey, you might as well leave it in. These things happen. <laughs> Right, that little crash is of course my um, my extractor hood has a hinge on the on the door on the, on the right hand side, and it was open. So when I put something heavy on the unsupported bit, it fell over, uh, rather like the pressure on a gouge. That's why you have catches. So when the chuck goes on, just the last minute, just give it a, a, a little kind of flick on. That means if you sand in reverse later, uh, it, the uh, chuck's less likely to come off. Right, so. It goes on, it goes on, it goes on. Right, so there's a school of thought which says you have to have a flat area um, at the top of a foot. Um, which you don't. All you need is a nice true surface here and then the jaws will line, will true up, uh, will sit and make sure that bowl runs square. Right, so, uh, just get the, um, get the top flat and then drill a depth hole. I'm going to use this, the half inch spindle gouge came to hand first. Uh, just using the, the wing of the tool, tools rolled over about 45 degrees. And hands on the rest and just squeezing the tool in. Drive the barrel on the edge and then go back to centre and get it. Put it flat and then the depth drill which is a twist drill with marks on it so I find the mark to go down to so that one and just don't lose track of it otherwise it's very easy to go through the bottom and if it if it's running true It'll just run true in your hand in the in your hand. If it's off at an angle, it'll go around like that, and you won't want to hold it anyway. So, um, and if that happens, you've just got to redo the whole start again. Uh, take out the eccentric bit and uh, just uh, make a starter hole further down the bowl. Right, half inch spindle gouge, uh, bowl gouge rather. So you start with the tool on its side, ease it into the wood, rotate it very slightly anti-clockwise. And away you go. Oops. Mm 
So I like to get down to the bottom of the hole as quickly as possible so I know where all the other cuts are going. Does seem an awfully long way down, but anyway. About to have problems with the camera angle, I think. Yeah, we smooth it over a bit. So the idea now is to get a rest uh, in at, almost at right angles to the uh, direction you're going. So this is a shorter rest, and that means I can get in there. I get better support. I don't like the curved rest inside. Uh, so they never seem to achieve very much, but um, now also going down to the half inch, uh, the three eighth bowl gouge. So the idea here is is going to be to get in with the bevel uh, pointing in the direction I want to go. Now this tool still has a fairly steep bevel on that wing, so I'm going to use my smaller gouge again, which has a much. This is a quarter inch deep fluted bowl gouge. It's got a longer bevel on the left and it means that I can get in more easily. This gouge. And I see what's happening over on the far side and my approach to bowl making is always to uh, get most of the way down the curve with the gouge and then I finish off across the bottom with scrapers. So I want to get at that rim now because I'm not, not going to be comfortable to do it later. Just chamfer it in very slightly. And I need to go, I can go down a little bit more. Or I can go in there quite a bit. So get the bevel riding, tools on its side, and roll it slightly anti-clockwise. And I'm watching what's happening down at about four o'clock. And that can still do take another one. Must be, remember not to get it too thin because I've got a, um, I don't want a detached rim. So I've got that little bead up in there, or inset bead. Right, that's much better. So if I want to check that, or you'll probably want me to check it. So that can go into there and just see how thick it is. So it's, uh, it's about six mil. That's, could be a little bit thinner, but um, take it down just a shade. Watch where the tool's picking up on the far side. I'm just taking out about two mil there in diameter. Now, getting across the bottom, I can hog it out with the deep fluted, uh, the um, half inch bowl gouge. And really, I've got to fix my hand there so the tool's going to be pivoting off my hand rather than the bowl rim. Sweep it across the bottom. And really just try and carry on the curve I've started with the other one. And I've still got plenty of wood down there fortunately. Freeze. Can you explain why you leave the last bit and why you don't use a bowl gouge? Oh, in the middle. Yes, now I'm coming to that. Yeah. Okay. Right. So uh, with this bit, I'm going to. I can still use this tool. Uh, just on the right wing, I can sweep that across. But I find I have a lot more control 
I'll just get the tail set out of the way. I've got a lot more control if I use a scraper and somewhere here got this one which is um, curved just a little bit more than I probably want. I want a curve just inside the curve I'm trying to cut and I could swing that across. Just got a lot more control, I find I have a lot more control over the shape than doing it with the bowl guard. If the wood's not cutting cleanly then I have to do it with the bowl guard. With this I just feel much more comfortable with this one. See how we're going with that. So these I think came from Lee Valley in Canada. Very nice calipers, right? So I can go a little bit more down there. Um, I'm going to take the bottom off, so but it, it's no bad thing just to check how you're going towards there. Got plenty, plenty of space, or plenty of wood rather. The wood's just wanted to carry that away and down, but it's much easier to gauge the the curve you're cutting with a um, with a radius which is just inside what you're trying to cut than it is with something like this, for instance, um, which I can I can use that. I just find it much more difficult to gauge that curve across the bottom using that tool. It relies entirely on you moving the, the tool absolutely evenly and not moving the fulcrum. So well, while I've got this I'll just come around the corner here. This tool is really designed for end grain hollowing. Um, for deep goblets and boxes and stuff like that. So back to the, the bowl. Bowl scraper. And the other thing which happens is you, when you get to the centre you tend to have a little nub just in the middle and the way to get rid of, the way to get rid of that is to come up from underneath, rather than try and go on top, you'll just make it worse. Just come up from underneath so you have the handle up and just drop the handle that strokes, strokes the edge through the middle and once you're away from centre on a curved surface like this you can drop the handle and even have it tilting up a little bit, have the edge of the tool tilting up a little bit. Right, so you just want that feeling nice and round, which it is. Yep, that looks all right. Right, so I can sand that and then we need to turn it around, make a little chuck and turn it around. So this tree was felled about uh, month ago I think and it's uh, been winter so it's not particularly full of sap or anything so it's sanding quite well it's almost ideal condition to work at the moment. Just stop and see if there's any picked up grain or anything uh, teeny little bit. I'm going to put it in reverse. That means all the fibres get cut in the other direction, which generally cleans it up a bit.
back to the right way round and need some fresh oops, some fresh 180 which is the yellow. So using a fair amount of pressure and I find if you fold the paper in three then uh, it seems to act as stuff doesn't get too hot, it's not so hot you can't hold it. going to set, uh, oil that or anything because it's uh, still green needs to dry out so leave that for a couple of weeks at least and now I need to rechuck this so it can be um, turn off the bottom now if you've got a chuck the right size I could even chuck it up on no not on those jaws but the next chuck up but it's wet wood so the metal on the chuck will likely stain the stain the wood so it's going to be better to make a metal a, um, a, wooden, a wooden jam chuck and so the screw chuck goes back on I've got another little block here for a jam chuck it's the other in fact the other half of the log from this bowl So as always with these things you start off by, probably won't be doing that too often at home, but do it with the lathe, going slow to start with, you shouldn't really hurt yourself. So I just want to get all the bark and everything off, get it round. So it's running about 1200. Just true up the top so that I know the thing's all kind of nicely in balance. Now I can pretty well eyeball this um, and I can see roughly where to um, go with a pencil line kind of in there somewhere and the idea is to cut uh, a little tenon with a, with a taper on it and then I can gauge uh, and then uh, make, the, make that a bit shallower when I know what size I need. So it can be somewhere around there. Let's get this um, tin out of the way a little bit. Oh, my tin. Right, so that goes on. That's pretty well dead right. So just make that a shallower taper and a nice little, just like cutting a foot. Um, so at the end of that cut, 
the tool's pretty much on its side. At the end of the cut, right on its side, and just pull it back, and that'll be fine. Now, ideally, I want this rim up to that shoulder, but it doesn't matter if it doesn't go all the way up. Now, I could bring in the tail center because I've got that little dot. So tell me where it is, but. I'm fairly used to doing this because this was the way we used to, before chucks came along. This is the way all bowls were finished off. And so I watch where it's high at that side and just knock it further on to the chuck. That's it. So that's running true. And you can bring the tail centre up or you can use the tool, keep a hand on it and just use the nose of, I usually use a 3 8 spindle gouge for this, so it's near the nose of the tool and just taking it through little arcing cuts, pivoting on my thumb. There's other things to show you here too. If you're doing it with the tail center, let's get that on. So, so the main purpose here is just to stop it shifting on the chuck. So we've now got the the um, tail center up, and it's got a little bit of pressure there, but it's not going very far in. Um, just a little aside, if you, if you don't want any, um, if you don't want a mark on the wood, you can use a little bit of MDF like that and just, whoops, just pop that in and then you can turn that if you have to, but this is another nifty little trick anyway, so. So we're now going to take this off, so I'm going to use the just, just to the right of the nose of the tool. And of course you can go a bit harder if you've got the tail finger in there. Right, so this is dragging the wing back, and it's really a sheer straight. And I just want to fair the surfaces up. Now you can also, if you need to, get in there with a um, with a scraper, and then I can find it. Uh, but this one, this is the shear scraper. And I want that in just a little bit more there, so slightly flat. Whoa, that was very careless of me. I just dragged the point back and stuff that up. It's not a major disaster, but irritating. And just shear scrape that. It's just using the lower portion of the tool just there. Now coming across the bottom, We've still got that teeny little bit of stuff there, and I'm going to sand that. Little bit 
picked up there. And give it a reverse as well. It had a bit of 240, so get that as well. So the problem now is, if you don't want to uh, risk taking the tail centre away, um, what happens? And what happens is that if you, because the grain is going across, because the grain is going across, all you have to do is give it a little shove and it just shifts and breaks like that. So I can come in with the gouge on its side almost to the end and then generally as I'm as I, I turn the lathe off and then just give it a little shove so that's now loose and all you have to do is clean up that by hand which is nice and easy um, I'm going to do it on if you want to do it uh, this way then you have your thumb on the wrist the hand is over the top and you turn it off. And then I'll just get a bit of 240 in the middle and that'll be it. Then the next problem is how do you get the thing off? Because it's fairly well on the uh, on the chuck. Okay, so it's fairly well on the chuck and and probably get at it with a, with a ruler. No, that's not quite big enough, so I need something a bit thicker. Too thick. Uh, I've got a thin, ah, the bottom end of the parting tool, so it just uses off. And so that's, oops, get, get the light out of the way. And so that's that one. Came up better than I was expecting, which is always a always a bonus. <laughs> but I like these rounded bottoms because they're um, uh, they'll rock around a little bit but the bowls never tip over. They might rock but they're nice little kind of nut bowls and things like that. And the detail because it cuts so clean it doesn't really need sanding. So that's that one.